Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm taking a look at a few different image examples, trying to walk through the differences between structure AI and details. They tend to do different things to a photo, but I often use the terms a little bit interchangeably, even though they're not the same thing. So I thought I'd walk through some examples and try to illustrate what they actually do to an image and what the differences are. Here's the first image. This was shot up in New England. We were just driving down a back road. I saw some English phone booth in the middle of a field. Had to stop. I'm not really sure why it was there, but there it is. So when I'm talking about structure AI, I'm always talking about adding a little bit of crunch, and I don't know why I grabbed my fist, but like a little bit of crunch and a little bit of crispiness. Um, with details, I don't tend to do details as much, but I often might say the same thing. You know, I want to give it a little bit of crunch. Um, and, and so, like I said, I kind of talk about them in terms of doing the same thing, but they do different things. Structure AI does tend to enhance uh, kind of like clarity, kind of like edge or local contrast in an image, and that can give the appearance of more detail. But I also think of it in terms of accentuating texture in an image. So I'm going to continue to try to use the word texture when I'm talking about structure AI because I really think it does accentuate the uh, texture in an image. And then details, it'll actually focus those soft edges and create a little bit more kind of like clarity, but it definitely brings up a little bit more sharpness or crispness. And so now I'm thinking of structure AI in terms of texture in a photo, and I'm thinking of details in terms of how crisp is the photo. Let's walk through this example. Um, the only thing I've done here is I lifted the exposure a little bit because it was a little bit dark, So and I cropped it. So there it was before, there it is now, just a slight difference to make it a little bit more visible. I'm going to start with Structure AI. Um, obviously, you drag the slider to the right. You've probably uh, seen me before, and if you haven't, or if you're new here or haven't noticed this, um, I'll often drag it to the left to soften up things, to make smoother uh, parts of an image, and then mask it in. So like skies and water, I do that a lot, but mostly focused on going to the right in this video. So the amount, of course, is how much. And you can immediately notice, and, and I'm at 100, which I don't recommend doing, but you immediately will notice the difference in contrast. If you look at the areas that are bright versus the areas that are dark, and like if you look here in the grass, like this section right here, you can see it's a little bit darker and that's a little bit lighter. If I show you the before and after, it's a little less pronounced and now it's a bit more pronounced. If you look here at the phone booth itself, a little less pronounced and a little bit more pronounced. So keep that in mind. You are impacting the contrast in a photo. And so depending on what's in the background and the, the existing contrast in the photo, your results or your mileage may vary. So just keep that in mind. Um, boost is, as the name implies, it boosts whatever it is you're doing. So if you're going to the left uh, and then adding boost, you're going to get even smoother photo. But in this case, we're going to the right. And as I boost it, it'll just accentuate that even more and starts to create kind of an HDR-like look, which uh, may or may not work depending on your photo. I'm going to reset that to zero on boost, but I'm going to leave that at 100 and just turn it off. So before and after, you can see quite a large visible difference. Uh, in the photo. Um, also, this is what I'm talking about with texture, like um, all this stuff, like if you look in the phone booth and the grass, if I show you the before and after, it's just got a little bit more texture to it. Um, I think this is particularly good on certain parts of a landscape, maybe rocks or mountains. Um, and then in cities, it works really great on streets or concrete, things like that. I think it works really well. In other words, mostly on man-made structures, although it can work fine, of course, on natural things that have some texture in them already, rocks, mountaintops, maybe trees. But I wouldn't necessarily use it in leaves and things like that, or these grasses, maybe just a little bit. And in fact, in this image, I might would use it a second time in local masking and go negative in the background, just mask it in here with the positive values into the telephone booth, and then maybe go add some negative structure to the background with a local adjustment. But I'm gonna turn that off for now and I go over to the detail slider. And here, as you can see, and as I'm sure you know, it's broken down by small, medium, and large details, also sharpening. To be clear, I'm not going through everything here. I'm not gonna get into these things in the bottom. I just wanna focus on the different difference between details and structure AI. Like I said, structure AI is more about the texture in a photo, and details is more about how crisp is the photo. 
So the small, medium, and large sliders, they just kind of set the sharpness of the different level of detail. So there's often a lot of small detail in a photo. And so it might work in some photos to drag it a little bit, but I would never go very high because you get that kind of look, which is really overly sharp and really way too detailed and frankly just not very attractive. So I almost never use small details. I would probably use medium details. I'll go to 100 here to show you the difference at 100. I mean, it doesn't look horrible, but it doesn't look great, but it looks better than it did when I had the small details cranked up all the way. Um, but just be careful. Again, everything is seasoned to taste. Just go a little bit gentle here, but you can see uh, it, it does provide a little bit more kind of sharpness to the overall look of the photo. And I think like in the low 30s, looks pretty good there. Again, I would probably mask it into the phone booth, but that's my personal preference. I tend to like a little bit smoother, less busy backgrounds. And let me show you the large details, not nearly as much of an impact. I tend to find it works that way. Larger details, there's fewer of them. Medium, there's a good amount and small, there's, there's quite a bit. Also, I noticed the contrast difference with large details. You can see that there, it's slight. With medium, it's a little bit more. And then with small, it's a little bit even more pronounced. Um, also, the photo just appears brighter overall because it's basically sharper everywhere. So I'm gonna reset that. So basically, the detail slider is increasing kind of the clarity of the focus and making the photo appear sharper overall. Essentially, it's making it more crystal clear. Now, ideally, what you're gonna do is on any particular photo is use maybe some combination of both. So here's structure AI, there it is. Uh, at 100 and there it is turned off. I'm gonna go to details and I'm gonna just gonna mess with medium and large and I'm gonna go kind of high here just to show you the example. I don't wanna go 100 on both because that feels like it's even more than just the 100 on structure AI. So if I turn that off before and after, quite a bit different uh, look to the photo versus here, I think you're gonna see more of a contrast difference. Again, contrast being the difference between the dark and the bright. It's really getting accentuated when I add structure compared to when I add details, it doesn't seem as pronounced. Here's another photo. I'm just gonna increase the exposure a little bit so it's more visible uh, across the entire image, but I haven't done anything else to this photo. I just increased the exposure, which you just saw. I wanna show you another example here of structure AI versus details and the difference. I think you'll really notice the contrast difference here. So structure AI at zero, structure AI at 100. That actually, I mean, it looks a little bit HDR, but it looks kind of reasonable. It doesn't, to me, look over the top. I would probably mask this in selectively, maybe take it out um, at a lower opacity across the trees. But you look at the contrast, look at the difference in the sky and the foreground. Massive difference using Structure AI. So let me go ahead and turn that off. And with the details, if I bump up medium um, and large details, I'm just getting a crisper photo. I'm not getting near the difference in contrast and the sky is really not affected at all. Whereas you go over here to Structure AI and you're seeing large impact on the sky, right? So keep that in mind. The difference in that contrast with Structure AI is having a bigger impact overall, I think, on the photo. And I think it actually works better in a photo like this. I don't really like the use of details here. Uh, but regardless of your photo, I think it makes sense to maybe examine them both, depending on what you're trying to accomplish with the photo, and then mask each of them in selectively. Let me show you also a portrait. Okay, here's a portrait. This is not mine. This is from Unsplash. I'll link to the artist down below. Now, Structure AI, as I mentioned before, is human aware. And so that means it's not gonna have a huge impact on the skin or the skin tones or the skin details, things like that in an image. So if I drag this to the right, you're gonna see the rest of the image kind of gets a bit crunchy in those outer edges. But if you look at her skin, it's really not being impacted at all. And even if I zoom in, and show you before and after, before and after, really minor, if even um, visible at all, a difference in her skin. I, I can almost not even tell the difference. Maybe there's a slight difference in the light. Um, and then boost, even though I'm boosting it, you're not seeing her skin get impacted, right? Whereas you are seeing the stuff around her get impacted. So I'm gonna reset boost just because I don't really need it. So keep that in mind that it's human aware. So before and after, it's a great way to accentuate kind of the background or things around a portrait without impacting the, the skin itself. Now, if I go to detail, let me turn that off. Uh, there we go. Now, if I go to details, that's a different story. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna start with large details and you're gonna see that impact some of the, uh, her skin. Uh, her eyes are getting certainly a lot crisper and um, you know a little bit um, 
a little bit on her skin, but not a ton. Um, but if when I start going into medium details and small, you'll start seeing that more prominently, right? So you'll see her skin getting affected as I drag that slider to the right. And then of course, small details is really going to do a lot on her skin. And that's one of the risks of details on a portrait is that it will impact the skin. It's not human aware. Details are global in nature. So it's impacting small, medium, and large details wherever they are in the photo, whereas Structure AI being an AI-based tool, it's human aware. So that's a long way of saying it. I would probably almost never use details on a portrait unless it was like some really grungy person and you're just accentuating that kind of look, it could make sense. But on a typical portrait, something like this, where you want them to uh, look their best, um, I think details is potentially uh, dangerous to, uh, to, to use there personal opinion. Again, your mileage may vary and your taste may vary, which is totally fine. But if you compare it, let me just pull some of these things up. Uh, but if you compare some of that um, before and after, you can see it impacting her skin and structure AI. Um, there we go. You'll see that's not touching her skin at all. So just keep that in mind, human aware versus not human aware. And again, your mileage may vary. The best thing to do, as I've already said, is figure out what works for you in any particular photo and then mask it in selectively, either Structure AI or Details. Don't hesitate to use Structure AI multiple times if you need to via a local adjustment. And that's it. I just wanted to walk through some of the differences in terms of what Structure AI does to a photo and what details do to a photo. And again, I'm trying to get this in my head so that I say it uh, in my videos more frequently, and that is Structure AI for me is more like accentuating the texture of a photo. And of course, Details AI is more about accentuating how crisp or the crispiness in a photo, not the crunchiness. Crunchiness is more like texture, which is more like Structure AI. So I say, you know, let's get a little crunch in there. I say those kind of things. And again, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of texture, whereas on the other side, Details, a little bit of crispiness, a little sharper. And I think with details, you have to be a little bit more careful because again, it's global in nature. So it's impacting small, medium, or large details anywhere in the photo. So just be careful with it. And I feel like you see a bit more over the top and over sharpened looking photos using detail slider than you would with Structure AI in a lot of situations, not everyone. So season to taste, mask it in, have fun with it, experiment, see what works best for you. That's it, my friends. Just trying to share a few uh, thoughts I was having about these tools. Have fun out there editing. Appreciate you guys coming by. I'll see you guys next time and adios.